I'm an uncle, and that's a good deal. That's why I like it, you know. Uh, get to be an uncle. I got the niece and the nephew. I love niece and nephew. Nephew asks a lot of questions, like there's somebody on our block that just had one of the gender relocation you know, surgeries, and the kid is fascinated. He's always asking me, he's like, is that a boy or is that a girl? And I have to explain to him in PC terms, you know, uh, uh, that's a transformer. Uh, he, <laughs> he traded his rocket launcher for a two-car garage. And, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's an architectural joke. So... I got the niece. The niece is great. I had to get her a gift. I went to that store, Urban Outfitters. You know that store. It'll make you feel old. I mean, you walk in, everybody works there speaking entirely in adverbs like, seriously, literally, really, seriously, literally, really, literally, seriously, literally, like, really, seriously. And I don't even know what stuff is. I'm standing in the ironic record section. There's this two-fingered glove thing. I'm like, that'd be a great gift. She could hail a cab or give people the fingers. I asked the guy, how much is a glove? He's like, it's not a glove. Those are skinny jeans. And that's when I had to leave. I was like, seriously, <laughs> literally, really. So, <laughs> so I don't have the kid. So the, the closest I came to ever having a kid was just raising my little brother, helping raise my little brother. Most, most, both of my parents worked, and I was the only one who could get him to stop crying when he would cry. I was the only one. I had this thing I would do. I, I'd make this noise. I'd go, ba 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 And uh, my parents were always like, make that noise, you know? So <laughs> that was my job. Make that noise. He's crying. <laughs> so I get this audition to be on a soap opera, right, to play this bodyguard uh, named Brock, and uh, <laughs> to, it's a bodyguard to one of the main guys, but it says in the audition, must be good with children. So I'm like, eh, yeah, whatever. So, right, I, I, I'll fake it or whatever. So I show up with the casting director, we do the audition. She's like, you know, and it's gonna be like four or five episodes, so it's good money, shoot New York. So the, and the casting director, and then she's like, you know, that was really good. I could, I could see you as, as Brock. I'm like, <laughs> me too. You know, and she's like, so you're good with kids, right? I'm like, yeah. She's like, you have children? I'm like, yeah, I got four or five. And uh, <laughs> so she goes, you know, the basics? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And she's like, you know, handling an infant? I'm like, yeah, you don't punch the soft spot, whatever. So, I mean, I got the basics, right? <laughs> it was a joke. She laughed. Uh, the sensitive side of the room tonight got quiet. Um, <laughs> So I get, the, I get the part, I get the part, right? So I'm very excited, because it's gonna be a great gig, right? You know, I've been on soap opera, I mean, I'm a comedian. It's crazy. So I show up the first day, and uh, I know the security guy. The security guy is a bouncer at a, at a comedy club I work at. I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, ah, you know, this is my day gig. He's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm, I'm Brock. You know, he's like, you're the, you're the bodyguard? I'm like, yeah, and he's like, oh, did they tell you about the baby? I'm like, no. He's like, they didn't tell you about the baby. I'm like, no. And he's like, bro, this baby, this baby's a contract player on the show. He's got a lot of juice on the show. So basically, if the baby doesn't like you, you get fired. There've been like 10 Brocks already, you know? He's like, but you, you know, you're good with kids. You got kids, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're a soft spot. So I, I go into the dressing room and I'm thinking about like, oh my God. And the director comes, he's like, look, <clears throat> and he's very stressed. He's like, we're gonna introduce you to the baby. Uh, the baby's very sensitive, so not a, no sudden movements, no direct eye contact. He doesn't, he doesn't like any of that. I'm like, I can't believe what I'm hearing, right? So he takes me out of my dressing room. It's this dinky little dressing room. takes me to the baby's dressing room. Baby's got this big dressing room. It's huge. It's got like a flat screen TV. There's fan mail. There's a fruit basket. It's got a manager, an agent. You know, it's got an Indian nanny holding them. The mom's pacing. Everybody's nervous. They're like, okay, hand them the baby. They hand me the baby. The baby immediately starts crying. So... I do that noise. I'm like, ba 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 ba, and the baby starts laughing. They're like, whatever that noise is, just keep doing that, right? <laughs> so we shoot the first episode. It goes great, and the baby really starts liking me. And you know what? I really start liking the baby. The baby, <laughs> we're, we're really, we're getting tight. The second episode, I find out sad stuff about the baby. The baby doesn't have a dad. You know, it, it's very sad. Uh, we get to the third episode, the baby does not want to be held by anybody else. I mean, even the Indian nanny, and she tries to do my stuff. She's like, bonga da bonga da 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 baby's like, ah! Ah! <laughs> That's my favorite part of the story. So, <laughs> So uh, they start adding episodes because they don't want to hire. I'm basically a glorified babysitter. They don't want to hire another guy. So I'm in. So I, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten episodes. It's it's great. I get. I think I get to. It's the tenth episode. I show up, and I see the security guy. I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, what's going on? He's like, did you hear what happened? I'm like, no, what happened? He's like, the baby got fired. I'm like, what? 
He's like, yeah, baby. I'm like, what? Why? He's like, he's making demands, wanted a new Audi, a 35% pay raise or whatever. So they just got another baby. It was a lot easier. I'm like, wow, that's kind of cold blooded. Fire a baby, right? That's show business. How you fire a baby? So I go, I go to meet this other baby, and this other baby was fine. Like, we were good. You know, we were, uh, you know, it's just holding me, blow spit bubbles, everything was fine. So we get to a couple more episodes. We get to the 12th episode. The director comes in, he's like, look, man, you're doing a phenomenal job with these babies. I've never seen anything like it. You're like a natural. Uh, here's what we're thinking. There's an older lady on this show that's been on since the beginning, and uh, we wanted to do a romantic storyline with someone. We were thinking you and her, and that'd be, that'd be really great. Uh, and he's like, you know, you'd have to make out on camera. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, how old is this lady? He's like, bro, she's, she's old. So, uh, <laughs> and he's like, here's the thing. I pitched her the idea, but and she's not really crazy about it because you're not really an actor. You're a comedian, but I'm going to introduce you. We'll suss it out. So he introduces me to this lady, and it's humiliating. This lady just goes off. She's like, I never... Yeah, I've been on that show since 1921 in the Gettysburg Address and uh, <laughs> Lincoln and Wood getting invented. And, uh, and she's like, this is not even an actor. He's a comedian. She's like, I guess the joke's on me and walks out of the room, like tosses a scarf. So the guy's like, don't worry about it. Show her you're a professional. Learn your lines. Get ready for the scene tomorrow. Show her you're a professional, you know, and, and you'll convince her, right? So the scene's very technical. I got the baby. I'm doing stuff with the baby. This old lady comes in. I got to put this baby down. I got to grab this old lady. <laughs> I got I to gotta kiss her against her will and wrestle with her. And then we got to roll around on the floor. It's like way out of my comfort zone, right? And so I'm, I'm practicing with a broom like the saucer's apprentice. You know, boot, doo, 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 doo. And, um, so I'm ready. Finally, I'm ready. So I show up the next day and I'm in a makeup chair and I'm next to the lady, right? And the lady's going off again. She's like, I never. This is DC, buddy. I'm a comedian. And right in the middle of it, she stops and goes to the makeup guy. She's like, could you do something about this? And on her lip is this giant cold sore. I mean, this thing, it, it looked like a hermit crab with a yarmulke made of pepperoni or like a, you know, like a Dorito was finger blasting a Frito or something you know, with a Triscuit. I mean, it's like a little, a little white dot like you push in a garage door. She comes down, you know, she launched missiles against North Korea. It's like a lip with a nipple, like a lipple. I mean, think of horror, right? And it's sitting there looking at me like, hey, Val, Red Brown, we're going to have some fun, you know? And, <laughs> and the guy looks at it and he's like, I can't... <sighs> He's like, I can disguise it so you don't see it on camera, but that's really time and zinc, you know, or whatever. So I know it's there. So I'm like, ah, so I'm getting nervous. You know, we got to make out in this scene. So I'm like, ah, what am I going to do? So uh, I remember like when people swim in the Atlantic or it's cold, they put on like a protective coat of Vaseline or something. So I get some Vaseline. Now my lips are all shiny. I'm walking around with these shiny lips. And the director comes over. He's like, what are you eating? Fried chicken before the scene? It's really unprofessional. So he's like, get that off your lips. So I said, so now I'm unprotected, right? So we start the scene, and, and I'm just really nervous, you know? And I got the baby, and I'm doing stuff with the baby. And then I put the baby down, the old lady comes in, I, I grab this old lady, right? And I start making out, but I'm, I'm hitting all around it. You know, I'm bobbing and weaving. That thing's sitting up there like, red rum, red rum, you know? <laughs> Come on, kid, let's, let's lay this on there. Let's spread it out. You know, <laughs> hot and crusty. And uh, <laughs> the sensitive side of the room did not approve. What a sensitive side of the room. <laughs> they didn't like the herpes. So... Uh, the director's like, cut. And he's like, this doesn't look real or authentic. He's like, you know, wh where's the chemistry? I'm like, chemistry, you better run out to that CVS and get some Abriva. I don't know if you saw that little <laughs> personal pan pizza, that raisin in the sun, you know. So I get fired. I get fired. And I'm kicking myself. I'm like, this was the greatest gig ever. How, what could I have done? I could have put some duct tape or something, you know. So I'm thinking about it, and months go by, and money's tight. It's always, money's always tight in comedy. Money's tight. I'm like, what am I going to do? I got some medical bills. I get a call from another soap opera. And, uh, uh, and they're like, are you available tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. And, and, they're, and I'm like, what's the, they're like, don't worry about it. Just come in. I'm like, well, how, don't worry about it. Just show up. So I'm like, okay. It's out in Queens. So I show up to the studio and I'm on the set, not knowing what's going on. It's just kind of bizarre. The first person I see is the baby's mother, the original baby's mother. I'm like, what are you doing here? She's like, they hired the baby. They needed a guy. He put in a word, you're in here, pal. I'm like, yes. She's like, wait till he sees you. She brings the baby out. He takes one look at me. He's like, ba 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 ba. 